Morning, everyone. Good to see you on this Transfiguration Sunday. Let's see what we got going on. Today is Noisy Offering Sunday. Uh, the gifts will be given to the Allen P. Linton Emergency Shelter. We're going to do that one a little different than normal. Stay tuned for instructions. Just got a few things going on. So, uh, as far as the uh, schedule for this week, tomorrow is President's Day. Um, we are hoping to do the day off program. However, we've got some kids that are sick and some numbers that are going woo. So, the deadline to RSVP for the day off program is 2 o'clock today. So if you know of someone who is interested or um, who needs a place for their kiddo to go tomorrow, tell them they need to sign up by 2 o'clock today because we need to make a decision about that. Wednesday begins our Lenten journey. It is Ash Wednesday. We have worship at 7 p.m. that evening, just worship at 7 p.m. Please join us for that. Um, Next Saturday, we ask for your prayers. Uh, from 9 to 2, the council and uh, other leaders will be meeting at Marley Ridge to think about how we are going to be focusing on our goals for this year and what goals we need to focus on. So we covet your prayers, um, thinking about what we really need to focus on. So please pray for us next Saturday. Uh, next Sunday, being the first Sunday of Lent, uh, Sunday school is going to be changing. Uh, we're going to be doing intergenerational school, kind of like Sunday school like we did in the fall. So we will all be meeting together in the chapel because we're going to be talking about prayer um, during this time of Lent all together. Um, something that is very important and yet something that we usually have a lot of questions about or concerns. So uh, that starts next Sunday. Another fun, important thing next Sunday Skippy Zimmerman is turning 90 years old, and her family wants to celebrate that, and we wholeheartedly agree. They are going to have a party downstairs at 12 p.m., and they are inviting us all to attend. So if you have some time next Sunday um, to celebrate Skippy and make her smile, uh, please join us downstairs at 12 p.m. Other things going on um, and coming up. Uh, a new cycle of grief share is starting on February 27th. If you need more information about that, that's a 13-week program um, for folks who have lost loved ones. Please speak with one of us, and we will get you in contact with the folks who are in charge of that. Uh, being that Lent is starting, yes, Ash Wednesday, and then the following Wednesdays, we will do our normal midweek observance. Dinner will be at 6, uh, and... It's always a good time and wonderful food. That's six o'clock. Seven o'clock, we will have children's activities and we will have midweek worship. Our focus this year is the book of Esther. Um, so both the adults and children will be focusing on the story of Esther and what her witness teaches us. Um, so please join us for that focus uh, for this Lenten season. Again, 6 o'clock dinner, 7 o'clock worship and children's activities. Other things to think about in your Lenten practices, it is that time where um, we have the CareNet Pregnancy Center. We um, save change and whatnot. That's a Lenten discipline of giving alms, saving change. You'll notice strategically around there are baby bottles. Please take your baby bottle with you to put your change um, or however you do that. Um, when you are finished with your bottle, they go in the office in a purple box there on the desk is where your filled bottles go. So please think about that. And then uh, Easter flower orders and Lutheran World relief gifts, the order forms are under the mailboxes. Um, please do pay attention. It, it, the, um, the deadline for those is March 5th, so you have to plan ahead a little bit, but please remember that, those orders. And another thing coming up in March that's near and dear to some here, the Empty Bowls Banquet um, for Middletown Valley People Helping People is March 16th. If you are interested in tickets for that, please contact Donna Jean Brandenburg. All right. Prayer requests and things that have happened since we were together last. Um, Gerald LaWall died on Tuesday, 
The family is having a private service, but we um, will keep Bonnie in our prayers and their whole family. Um, we also add to our prayer list Bob Moeller, Jim's dad, who is in the hospital. Um, we will pray for him and add him. Are there any other prayer requests or things we need to add or announce? Yes. Alrighty. Well, then we will begin our worship this morning with music. Good morning. Good morning. Please rise as you are able, and we're going to sing Indescribable.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and our God, 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 Holy one source of our mind, we confess that we are wrapped out of sin and cannot be ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the Lord, you so love. Forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another. For the glory of your holy name. In the mercy of Almighty God, God Jesus Christ, Christ has been died for us and lives, saved God for us all the world's sins. As a called and ordained name to the Church of Christ and by His name, I therefore declare to the entire families of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, in the transfiguration of your Son, you confirm the mysteries of faith by the witness of Moses and Elijah. And in the voice of the bright cloud declaring Jesus, your beloved Son, you foreshadow in our adoption as your children. Make us heirs with Christ, with your glory, and bring us to joy and sins. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and all forever. Amen. Y'all may be seated for the lessons. Good morning. First reading is from Exodus 24, verses 12 through 18. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, wait here for us until we come to you again, for Aaron and her are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. The word of the Lord. We'll read responsibly from Psalm 2. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the peoples mutter empty threats? Let us break their yoke, they say. Let us cast off their bonds from us. Then in wrath, God speaks to them, and in rage fills them with terror. Let me announce the decree of the Lord, who said to me, You are my son, this day have I begotten you. You shall crush them with an iron rod, and shatter them like a piece of pottery. And now, you to be wise, you are the rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with fear, and with trembling bow in worship. Thus the Lord be and you carry out the sons of the Lord. Now happy are all who take refuge in our God. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. This is the Holy Holy Gospel Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And I will go to the front of the Lord. We need it. One shoe shoe to me. Patience, my friend, patience. Your cheesy turtles? Okay, during the sermon you can have cheesy turtles. Everybody will be in, in great uh, coveting of your cheesy turtles. Okay, well, okay. Well, you can go back and get cheesy turtles. Good morning, Nicole. Okay. What are some things we say when we're excited? Surprise! Surprise! Yes, what are some other things we say when we're excited? Oh, did I forget Georgie? I'm sorry, Georgie. It's Caitlin. What are some other things we say? Surprise, yippee, or yay. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yay. Anything else? What about yes? Anything else? Yeah. Georgie, what are some things you say when you're excited? Hooray! Yes. You want it? <laughs> uh, no, thank you. No, thank you. Okay, so some things we say. We say different things when we're excited and happy. Okay, what are some different things and that we say in church when we're excited and happy? What are some different things we say? Sometimes we say when we're excited and happy in church. We don't do this as much in our tradition. Some might say when the preacher is preaching, Amen! Preach it, preacher! Feel free to do that anytime I'm preaching. I don't know about him, but you could do that with me. Anything else? Other, other exciting words we use in church? Leah's got the answer. What do we say, people? The cheat sheet's in your boogle hen. Hallelujah! Yes! Hallelujah! This is one of the words we use when we're so excited and we're thankful to God for what God has done for us. Maybe praise Jesus. Thank you. We're about to enter into a new season in the church year, and it's called Lent. And it's a season where we're not as very joyful. We think a lot about what are some of the things we do that keep us from loving God, that keep us from loving one another as God would want us to, and we put away some words like hallelujah. So for the next 40 days, we are not going to say hallelujah. And we're going to put them away and then we will bring them back out. We'll bring the hallelujah back out on Easter vigil and maybe do something special on Easter Sunday. So we need to uh, help the congregation out. We're going to go collect some hallelujahs today, okay? Get out your hallelujahs, friends. All right. You. You on the side over here. It's Nicole right up here. 
You there? And Miss Leah, if you would get that end. Yep, right here, where Mr. Gill is, and Miss Patricia, and you just keep on going back. Grab those alleys. Start with Mr. Ike, and Mr. Brian, and Mr. Glenn. Just gather up all those alleys and bring them back to me, and we're going to put them in the basket. Good job, good job, everybody. Basket. Thank you. This is how we're going to get Isaiah's uh, energy out today. Excellent, excellent. Oh. Thank you, thank you. I'm also working on skills for my children to work at the baseball park. Oh, oh, Ms. Rosella has. Thank you, Ms. Rosella. All right, let's take them back and we'll go sit down. We're in an awesome job, awesome job. Okay, day boys, come back here. Okay, walking feet. I'll take them. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so, oh, one more, one more. Okay, so now this is the fun part. We're gonna say one more time. We're gonna let them do it too, but it's way more fun for us. In our loudest voice possible. Are you ready, Georgie? This is totally for you. You're gonna love this. Your loudest voice possible, hallelujah, on the count of three. You can do it too. Ready? One, two, three. Hallelujah! Okay, well done. Very, very good. It's like you had coffee or something. Okay, so we are not going to say hallelujah. And then on Easter Sunday, we will say hallelujah like all the time and make lots of noise and be very excited. Okay, so let's pray. Can we fold our hands together? And repeat after me. Dear God, thank you. For moments to be happy. Thank you for moments where we are not as happy. Thank you for being with us no matter what. Amen. All right, y'all can sit down. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm messing with you this morning. So I needed to collect alleluias and we weren't going to get confused. So your noisy change offering that you love to give, the on your way out today, there is a bucket right there, and you can put it in where we're with next to school tools. That's the screen with the noisy offering, but we need kids to do alleluia and not get confused for yourself. Noisy offering, the pastor will remind you for the better to put your noisy offering. Pardon? And some of you already did. Good job. Good job. Way to read the signs. All right. We're at this point. Okay. All right. Please pray for me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts. Be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So, the, um, one of the classes that I thought would be really super helpful, our first year of seminary, um, that actually was not helpful at all, um, was... I don't want to say it was one of the hardest classes that I took, but I was just really sad after I took it. And when I tell you what it is, you might be slightly upset and disturbed. It was Foundations of Homiletics, i.e. Preaching 101. You would think that that would be one of the most important classes that I took. And yes, I know that um, there are many other things that a pastor does besides preach. This is true, and very important things. But you would think that you would have gleaned some very, very important information in Preaching 101, Foundations of Homiletics. But I left there going, I don't think I know any more about preaching a sermon than I did when I started this course 12 weeks ago. 
And unfortunately, I think many of our classmates felt the same. Now, needless to say, over many years, <laughs> thanks to many mentors, I learned a lot about preaching in different ways. But I had hoped early on that I would have learned a little bit more about preaching. Now, the other sad part about um, our seminaries at the moment then, so that was 2009, and it hasn't really gotten a lot better, and I'm very confused as to why, but there were only, there was one main preaching professor who taught that class and all the rest of the preaching classes. We had one other adjunct, or we could take a class down at the consortium in DC, but it was only this one preaching professor to help us learn to preach. So I didn't learn what I hoped to learn in Preaching 101. However, the thought that I did learn from this same um, professor, who also just happened to be my advisor besides, <laughs> I actually learned in Preaching Mark when we took that course. And the helpful thing that I did take away from Preaching 101 was a sheet that was kind of a, here's how to start preparing a sermon. So like, look at the text, look at what happened before, look at what happened after, think about your context, who are you preaching to, what are the people experiencing, what time of the church year is it? So this was a helpful sheet, and two of the things on it were focus and function. What is the focus of the sermon, what is the function? The focus of the sermon is, what's the biblical text you're preaching on? What's the story? Okay, that's helpful. I can at least figure out where I'm going to go. And what's the function? What are you hoping that once you preach this sermon, people will do? Or it will change in someone? Or will make someone think about? So needless to say, the first few years of preaching, I was always thinking about, okay, if I do nothing else, what's the focus? What's the function? What's the focus? What's the function? I can do that. And what I learned from this professor that I still think is very important is sometimes the function of the sermon is nothing else, nothing else, but to put us in awe of God. We don't do anything else, but we just sit there in awe of who God is and what God does. Okay. So here we are, it's Transfiguration Sunday. The Transfiguration is a very interesting story. It brings up some questions. Uh, I had some good questions on the Lectio this week. It's a very awe-inspiring moment. But it also provides this really beautiful bridge from where we've just been and where we're going. So we've been in the church here in the season of Epiphany, the season when we see how God is revealed to us through Jesus. We start with, of course, the star that God is light and brings light and brings light to all nations. We hear the amazingness of how God can do miracles, changing water into wine. We hear how God um, is bringing the kingdom. We've spent like the last three weeks in the Sermon of the Mount where Jesus is talking about this is what the kingdom looks like. This is what God's kingdom looks like among God's people. We've spent a lot of time there. And then we're heading into Lent. And Lent has a different focus. We're going to hear and think about what are those things in this season that drive us away from who God is creating us to be? What are those things that kind of are roadblocks for us? And we examine ourselves in Lent to think about what roadblocks we have that put us and, and our in-between us and our relationship with God. That's what the whole season of Lent is about. Examining and thinking about what are things that keep us from being who God wants us to be. And how do we work back towards who God is, 
wants us to be in relationship with. And then you have this beautiful story in the middle that shows this awesomeness of God because clearly when Jesus is with Peter, James, and John and he is changed and his clothes are dazzling white and his face shone and we hearken back to you hear the story of Moses and how Moses was changed. We hear how awe-inspiring God is, right? We too understand Peter, of course, we give Peter a bad rap, but he was doing, well, we should do something to like take this moment. We are in the presence of God. Let's hold on to this for a second. And then not only do we have, I mean, they're doing this because they see Moses and Elijah. Then the voice comes again, a voice, and they are scared. This is my son, the beloved with him. I'm well pleased. Listen to him. And they fall down in worship. And they're afraid. And we get that. We'd be afraid too if we have just seen like some of the forebears of our faith come back. And oh yes, then a bigger voice calling from, we get the fear. There's a detail in Matthew that happens in no other of the transfiguration stories. Not in Mark and not in Luke. And I think it's perfect. Verse 7 says, Jesus came when they were on the ground, and touched them. They're scared, and he sees it, and he comes, and he touches them. And he says, get up, and do not be afraid. Get up, and do not be afraid. And I love this, because let's think about this a second, friends. There's this awe-inspiring moment of this amazing God, where the forebears, the prophet, and the, the one who was given the law show up. And God can seem so other, and so huge, and so awe-inspiring. And then in the next minute, God touches them. God incarnate in Jesus Christ in their fear, in their worry, in their, I don't know what's happening. This is the perfect bridge between seasons of Epiphany and Lent that we're entering into because it reminds us about who the God is that we are in relationship with. It is the God who, yes, is awe-inspiring and does amazing things beyond our wildest imaginations. And yet it's the God who doesn't run away when we are scared, when we are fearful, when we turn our backs on God, i.e. everything we're going to think about in this season of Lent. This God does not run away, is not far off. This God says, I want to be with you. I want to be in relationship with you. And I understand that there are things between us. But don't fear. I will be with you. I will walk alongside you as we figure this out. Today we sit here, again, thinking about this awesomeness of God, but also the humbleness of the fact that this God doesn't give up on us ever. We're about to enter this season, and God is going to be with us even as we are convicted about those things that we put in between our relationship with God. That's what we get to celebrate in the transfiguration with all its confusion and whatnot, that we have a God who can be both and not just one or the other. And that is something to give thanks for. Amen. Please rise. We put together a medley from some familiar songs. Please sing along with us.
to the word of God, let's confess our faith using the words of the ninth We believe in one God. People of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. We pray for your church here on earth. 
as we embark on our Lenten journey this week, continue to inspire our, our leaders, both lay and ordained, to proclaim your good news. We ask you to be with, the, with your creation and help us to remember that all that you have made is good. We pray for peace and justice in our world this day. We especially lift up local leaders. Our, 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 we especially lift up the President of the United States, the Governor of Maryland, all those who make and minister and judge our laws accordingly. We also lift up the poor, the oppressed, the sick, the bereaved, and lonely, and all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit this day. We especially lift up Bob, Kathy, Jason, Linda, Jackie, Nancy, Trish, Nina, Ron, Bill, Clark, Joel, Francis, Doris, Donna, all those on our prayer list this day and those we name either aloud or silently in our hearts. We also remember all those who have died and now rest in you. We especially lift up the family of Joyce Hale and Jerry Lawall. And so all who mourn this day and assure them of eternal reunion in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all whom we pray, trusting your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Which are assigned God's peace with your brothers and sisters in Christ, and you may be seated.
Please join us and let us pray. Liberating God, to break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings and thanksgiving for your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to be our thanks and praise. Give you thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, who was heralded by prophets throughout the ages, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and proclaim to us your holy will. Jesus is the Word made flesh, and we have beheld his glory. The glory is as the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. He is your word sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot and was shown forth as your son, born of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. He took on our struggles. He saw humanity's failures. It is he who fulfilled your will, who accomplished what we could never do for ourselves, who stretched out his hand in suffering in order to free from suffering all who call on you. It is he who handed over to a death he freely accepted, in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection to all the world. It was he that on a night in which he was handed over, took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. Give, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. And gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we lift this bread and cup before you, knowing that as long as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death until he comes. And we ask you, send your spirit upon these gifts of your church, gather into one who all who share this bread and wine, fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith and truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, and your Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that our Lord is good. Congregation may be seated. This is the Bible. This is the blood. 
The buying blood of our Lord, Lord please, please. please. The buying blood of our Lord, Lord, Lord Savior Jesus Christ, 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 Amen. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, to love kindness, and to journey humbly with you. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Let's sing. And uh, don't forget, noisy offering when you leave today. Uh, and better yet, make it a silent offering. It's even better. So let us sing our last one, song. Let's listen to our voices and say, Lord, Lord, I lift your name.
Everybody got blessed.